Shalom, beloved. Shabbat Shalom. A word. Here this day, we shall not begin until we say a prayer of thanksgiving, of praise and honor to the Most High Yahuwah. Yah of our ancestors, Yah of Abraham, Yah of Isaac, and Yah of Jacob. This day in creation, we give praise to you and honor and glorify you. We glorify you and honor you because all things that are created were created by you, seen and unseen, known and unknown. The earth is yours and the fullness thereof. We ask that you forgive us our sins, for they are many. We have followed behind the other nations. And because of that great and mighty sin and turning against you, we are now under this evil curse of them. But this 400 years has gone over our heads, and now we seek our release. We have turned to you, waiting, looking, seeking, and still praying for thy mercy and forgiveness for the sins we still commit. We ask that you remember the covenant you made with Abraham. You are that Yahuwah, the same Yahuwah that spoke in power and greatness to Abraham, the same Yahuwah who talked to Isaac, and the same one who met Jacob when he walked up your glorious ladder and saw creation and you speaking to him as he lay on that rock that dreadful day, as he wrestled with you and prevailed and you changed his name from Jacob to Yasharel, for he had prevailed with both Yah and man. Remember that day as we wrestle now, Yasharel wrestles, for there shall come a time you will change our name again. We are wrestling, Father, wrestling to prevail with you that you hear us and bring us out of the land of our enemies scattered across the four corners of this earth. Draw us together as one nation under you. And let us not look to nor support these other nations who have not honored you and therefore dishonor, rob and pollute and corrupt us. Bring us home. Gather us with one spirit, one heart, one mind as we glorify and honor and remember you in the lands of our captivities for we are scattered all over the world but we are still one people, your chosen people set apart by you. We understand and honor you and your creation as the earth is being destroyed and polluted spiritually, physically, and mentally. This world is polluted with wickedness in high places, Father. It teaches the pollution of violence and murder and robberies and glorifies it. No morality, no morality, Father. Bring us out physically. The food is poison, the water is poison, for they do not honor your creation, but alter it with chemicals and pollutants and hormones, Father. But we remember you, our creator, who has created all things. We were not created for the earth's sake, but the earth was created for our sakes, and yet they destroy the earth. And many of us who participate, Father, we ask for your merciful forgiveness. Without your mercy, we are doomed. But you, in your word that does not fall to the ground, said you would redeem us a remnant of us, and let all of us who come under this prayer be a part of that remnant, Father. For the wars come, and the rumors of wars, and whether there be a World War III, there is only one war that we need win, 
and that is our spiritual warfare. Let us come back, release us from this prison of these carnal people and bring us home to you. Remember the covenant, Father. Wake us up, circumcise our hearts, circumcise our ears, circumcise our spirits that we draw nigh, for as we draw nigh unto you, you said you would draw nigh unto us. We give you glory this day, this day your Sabbath, you rested from your creation, but there are those who want to destroy your creation, Father, because they've made weapons of war. We ask that you remember us and your covenant, for you are the same one who spoke to Abraham. You speak to us and keep us. You guided Moses to guide us out. You are that, Yahuwah. You change if not. Let us remember, Father, the power of who you are. Anoint us with your glorious spirit that we draw closer as we walk through this land of darkness, be our everlasting light. Glorify you in us by enduing us with the oracles of your word. Let them break forth, let them forever be in our mouths as we honor you this day and forevermore. Remember Yasharel and the covenant father, bring us out. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, the word of Yahuwah, we give you praise this day. Hallelujah, glory, honor, and praise. Thanksgiving unto you. Thank you, Father, for the earth, for the food, for the animals, for the light, for the water, for the spring, winter, summer, and fall. We glorify you, the true creator, and let not the destroyer have dominance. In Yeshua's name, we give praise and give up this prayer unto you. Receive it as a sweet smelling incense, Father. Amen. Yes, beloved, there is a war. There is not just a war for lands and power, but there is a spiritual war going on. Many people are distracted believing that this physical war is the greater of the two, but there is actually a spiritual war going on. In these lands of our captivity, we are in the midst of watching the possible thresholds of World War III. And many people point this way and that way. But you see, whether we talk about current wars or wars in the past, since we have been in our captivity, we have been caught in these wars, always being asked to fight and support while being restrained and constrained and oppressed, beloved. We have been asked to shed tears, to open our hearts to these wolves. What wolves? Here in the land of Babylon, whether we talk about aiding in the destruction of the natives, the wars that have gone on, that war against our spirits as well as our bodies, whether we talk about the wars against the native so-called Americans, whether we talk about the wars with the Mexican America to take the land, whether we talk about Spanish American wars when you had the Buffalo soldiers fighting and giving the victory to the land of Babylon and yet this so-called presidential one wanted to take the glory for Rough Riders and not honor the Buffalo soldiers who fought in that war, those spiritual wars, beloved. Whether we talk about revolutionary wars in the land of our captivity and whether we fought on 
the side of Britain who promised freedom, although they were part of the enslavement too, or whether we fought on the side of Babylon, our blood was spilled in these wars. Whether we talk about the Civil War and we look at the 54th Regiment of Massachusetts or the others who fought, forced to even aid the Confederate as well as the Union in those wars to gain freedom, only to find this reconstruction left them with nothing. Although we rose, they brought us back, Jim Crow laws and such, those wars. Whether we talk about the first war, world war, and we bring up the Harlem Hellfighters given weapons that would not work, sent to serve France and gain more honor overseas than they did in Babylon who sent them to fight those wars. Whether we talk about the Second World War, this war where the destruction grew with each war, the weapons of mass destruction, the, the engines of war, if you will, were refined and recreated. Whether we talk about the mini ball in the Civil War, whether we talk about the ships in, and planes in the First World War, whether we talk about the Manhattan Project, that produced the first nuclear weapon in America. Robert Oppenheimer quoting the Bhagavad Vita, I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. When you look at these foolish nations who have created engines of war, weapons, nuclear warheads so great that they can destroy the world. And now we stare at a third world war. And yet everybody wants Yasharel to feel pity, to be supporting when all you have to do is look at the history of those wars to know it was always fight for us, shed your blood for us so that we can maintain power over you, this foolish nation, this nation that has become death and the destroyer of worlds. These nations who walk around with nuclear warheads, never giving the inhabitants the right to say you have no right to create these things. Why? Because just like Robert Oppenheimer said, I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. And yet they have become so arrogant that they have stepped into the space of the most high creator, trying to believe they have the power and the right to have this power to control the world so much so that if you don't do what we say, we will obliterate you and yet want to stop others from having these same set weapons of true mass destruction, this threat of a third world war. Why? Because it traces back to World War II when Babylon, America created that atom bomb, when Robert Oppenheimer saw the power of what he did when they worked on that Manhattan project and Harry Truman decided drop it on Hiroshima and Nagasaki because they stepped into the realm of God, destroying untold people. And now we have these superpowers, if you want to call it that. They think they are superpowers, but Yahuwah, who the earth and the, the law is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. These who think they are a superpower have never known true power because had they known they would have been humble enough not to destroy that which they did not create. But here we honor him on this seventh day 
this Sabbath day, the day that they removed and tried to create a Sunday worship for this day, we give honor because we understand whether there are wars or rumors of wars, we know who the true power is and that judgment has come. Yes, beloved, yes. I want <clears throat> to share something with you because just as I stated in a previous video, they knew just like it was in the days of Noah, so would it be in the last days, beloved, but it won't be water this time. You see, in the sacred scriptures, it talks about flying swords, these, these rockets, these destructions that it'll blot out the sun and the moon when the earth becomes cold. Why? Because that fallout, that fallout will literally obscure the sun. But you see, we need to understand what the most high tells us. Work with me, bear with me as I share this thing because I understand who created all things. The breath of life comes from one person, although you have foolish nations sharing a spiritual lineage of being, trying to be the destroyer of worlds, they are become death. Just like Robert Oppenheimer said when he quoted those Hindu spiritual, the Bhagavita, I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Now, as they build their so-called military might to such a foolish level that they can destroy the whole wide world and call themselves superpowers, hegemon, hegemon, when in truth and reality, they have gone blind. They have become some of the greatest sinners of all time because they want to destroy what the Lord created. They have no power because common sense, something that seems so uncommon to many and most common sense would have said, why should we create something so destructive that it leaves the whole world a wasteland? What power, what kingdom can you rule when you leave it where people can't even afford to go outside and drink the water or breathe in the air? They can't trust what the nuclear fallout or the radiation did to the plants and the food and the animals. It's a foolish nation, foolish. But allow me, beloved, I'm in the book of Matthew. I'm going to the chapter 24. And I'm going to start in verse six. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you not be troubled, beloved. Yahuwah knows. He knows. He knows about these foolish nations. And we glorify and honor him because we know to whom we belong and to whom we are committed, beloved. Allow me to finish. Mm. See that ye are not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Mm -hmm. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. These are the beginnings of sorrow, and they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. We have seen these other nations, we have looked across waters where we're supposed to have soft eyes and pitiful hearts and seeing the hatred that they have for the melanated ones. Beloved, yes, yes, yes. I'm going to move around within the book of Matthew. I'm in the 24th chapter. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to go to verse 21. For then 
shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor, no, nor ever shall be. This is going to bring it to its culmination, beloved. It is time to separate the wheat from the tares, okay? Except those days should be shortened. Mm -hmm. There should no flesh be saved. Why? Because these foolish nations have become death, the destroyer of worlds. That's why, okay? Mm -hmm. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. But for the elect's sake, that's why we see time just moving, moving, moving. We see the manifestation of the word of the most high, even as time has sped up. We see it, beloved. He is showing us, not just through his words, but the living power of his word moving throughout time. Time is warbling, time is doing something. And we notice it, beloved, because his word goes out and doesn't come back void. Now, let me finish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want to read as I'm going throughout Matthew 24, and I'm going to skip through a few books. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. Why? Because they've made these nuclear weapons, those foolish nations that want to rule that which they never created, never understanding that there shall come a day when they have to stand before judgment. Let me finish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Yes, beloved. Many of you, I've had one person tell me, you shouldn't pray for the day of the Lord. I am not praying for the day of the Lord. I am praying for the redemption of Yasharel. Now, beloved, I'm going to move throughout, okay? I'm going to move throughout, and if I sound like I, uh, what do you call that, digress, then maybe I need to digress. I'm going into the book of Isaiah chapter 65. I had it marked off and yet, oh, I have it over here. Okay. I have multiple books open. Bear with me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm in the book of Isaiah chapter 65, starting at the ninth verse. We know of our sin. We know of our afflictions. We know of being carried away. We know of the suffering of being under people who we don't have to call on the separations and the differences. They have done it historically up until this very moment. Even those media mongrels who try to tell us to feel so much softness and tenderness yet have none for us, try to recreate the narrative, if you will. These are civilized people. These same foolish people who created the engines of war that can destroy the entire earth. And yet they're civilized. Yes, yes, yes. But somehow they must have missed the scriptures and what the Lord says that the earth is the Lord. It is not within their right to destroy it as they intend to. However, we will continue. The book of Isaiah chapter 65, starting at the ninth verse, I will bring forth descendants from Jacob mm -hmm. and from Judah inheritors of my mountain. My chosen shall inherit it. See, it's not a hope. It's not a dream. It's not a I wish. It a is. It a it a is. It's a is. It's a uh-huh. It's a it's done. It's settled in the eternal. 
and it will manifest in this earthly realm. It's a is, it's a is, it is what it is going to be. It shall. That is for a certainty. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah, inheritors of my mountain, my chosen shall inherit it, and my servants shall settle there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sharon shall become a pasture of flocks in the valley of Acre, a place for herds to lie down for my people who have sought me. But you who forsake the Lord, who forget my holy mountain, who set a table for fortune and fill cups mixed with wine for destiny, I will destine you to the sword and all you who bow down to the slaughter. Beloved, I'm going to move throughout. Mm -hmm. We are in verse 17. We are still in chapter 65 of the book of Isaiah. Mm -hmm. For I am about, mm -mm, wait a minute now, this thing really happened. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The form of things shall not be remembered nor come to mind. Understand something, a lot of people, there's such thing as truly literal and then there are things as figurative. We are going to talk in the literal and figurative about the new heavens and new heavens and new atmosphere. You see, the atmosphere that we live in now is polluted. It's based on lies. Truth has no place. Honor has no place. It's based on selfishness. It's based on greed and extreme immorality. Those who say they follow the most high and yet their actions, the fruit of what they do tells another story. But let's go back. For I'm about to create new heavens, a new atmosphere mm -hmm. and a new earth. Understand something. A lot of people think, how can you create a new earth. If for those of you who live here in America, in Babylon, if you look at the earth in Babylon, this is not the beauty, the cleanliness, the respect of nature, of the atmosphere that was here before Columbus guided all those others to follow him. The earth in this region of the world, this world, here was a completely different atmosphere. The waters weren't abused, the, the land wasn't abused, the animals were not abused. There was cleanliness to it. I'm talking spiritual as well as physical, okay? But just like a place can be destroyed and rebuilt a lot of times into something you can't even recognize what used to be there because the new creation, the new build is completely different. We have seen it through the gentrification of neighborhoods. You go back through and can barely recognize or remember. I remember when I grew up here, they didn't put money into it, but now that we filled the tax coffers up, they spilled it on, spend it on others that move in and gentrify it. And it's a new earth. It's a new area. Suddenly they built parks and playgrounds where there was nothing but concrete and broken down buildings, a uh, new earth. Well, if man can think of how to recreate an atmosphere where they have more police presence, where they keep it crime free because they don't allow to all the guns, how are these people in other poverty stricken neighborhoods coming up with so many guns because they create an atmosphere of destruction? How is it that everything is torn down, falling down, because it is not built up? But we will take that money, those taxes, and when we move you out and move ours in, all the taxes in the coffer that you spent on, we'll use it on our own to gentrify and make it as though you didn't know how to take care of your atmosphere. I digress. I'm going back. We're in the book of Isaiah. Chapter 65, I'm at the 17th verse. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered nor come to mind. 
but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You see, right now we are preparing for the change. And yes, beloved, we are going to have to go through that tribulation, that tribulation. But even though we hear wars and rumors of wars, this is our redemption. Some of us who are sinners, the Lord is going to deal with us. Two thirds won't make it. But may the voices and the ears that are here be that one third, be that one third. I am now, beloved about to skip around bear with me bear with me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now i'm in the book of second Ezra's beloved chapter six verse 40 hear my words oh my people prepare for battle and in the midst of the calamities be like strangers on the earth let the one who sells be like the one who will flee. Let the one who buys be like the one who will lose. Let the one who does business be like the one who will not make a profit. Let the one who builds a house be like one who will not live in it. Okay, now I'm going to skip through. I am still in chapter six, but I'm coming to the end of it. Okay. I'm in chat, verse 74, chapter six, second Ezra. Listen, my elect one, says the Lord, the days of tribulation are at hand, but I will deliver you from them. Do not fear or doubt, for the Lord is your God. You who keep my commandments and precepts, says the Lord God, must not let your sins weigh you down or your iniquities prevail over you. Woe to those who are choked by their sins and overwhelmed by their iniquities. Listen. We have to prepare. We know one of the things we're waiting for is our exit. So when we look around, when we look around, we have to be of certainty. We are going to leave. We are going to leave, beloved. So as we see these wars and rumors of war, we know our redemption draws not. We know by the shortening of time. We know by the speeding up of time. These things are manifest to us now. And even though there are those who are um, at spiritual wickedness in high places, bear with me, bear with me. I'm moving throughout. I've got multiple books open as I try to bring this to a conclusion. Okay, mm. I'm in the book of Ephesians chapter six at the 12th verse. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world. They rule darkness, they are become death, the destroyer of world, they sit, and hold weapons of mass destruction to destroy peoples who get no voice, no choice. They're just in it and they do not honor the most high because the earth is his, his creation. And yet they have made weapons that can destroy everything. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. Now, these are spiritual powers. These are different levels of angels that have fallen under the wicked one, that followed the wicked one, this persuasive wicked one that took a third of the angels of heaven. These same wicked ones speak into the ears of foolish nations, these powers, okay, against rulers of the darkness, of this world against spiritual wickedness. Yes, 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 in high places. See, they're not working down low. They sitting high. This wickedness is so powerful that they have taken on powers they never had a right to. They never had a right to. But this day, this Sabbath, we are gonna honor and glorify the creator of 
all things because we are about to go home. We have to be ready to go. We have to be ready to go because they are on a self-destruct mission. They are on a self-destruct. They have unleashed their own beast. Frankenstein's monster is running amok, a monster they created, a monster. I am not talking about a person. I am talking about the spirit of what they're doing. And they always want to shine the light the other way. They always want the other guy to be the bad guy, the other guy. Even when they speak of um, other nations, this doesn't happen here. And yet they've gone into Iraq and blasted it back to the Stone Age at one point. It's like, wait a minute, what are you doing over there when you claim your enemy is in Afghanistan, but you ran to Iraq? And if we look at the whole thing, just, just, just to bring it into focus, we talk about sovereign nations. You're in a nation that whether you got argument with them or not, you live over on the other side of the water, on the other side of the pond, and yet you're the good guy. At least that's how you're going to narrate that story because those people are used to it. But who is the one that proliferates it? Foolish nations, beloved. Yes, yes, yes. And always willing to let us fight in the midst of these wars. Well, there's another war going on. When we look in the book of Revelations in chapter 12, when that enemy went after, and I'm gonna read it as I'm turning, uh, bear with me again, I've got a lot of books in front of me. Okay, all right. And there appeared a wonder, a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon, having seven heads and 10 horns and seven crowns upon his head. Now, I'm going to skip down. Mm -hmm. The woman fled and was taken into the wilderness. So I'm going to move on all the way to the last verse of the 12th book of Revelation, 17th verse, 12th chapter, 17th verse. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of Yah and have the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach. We've already been in a war, beloved. We've been in a war. But this time, our Redeemer draws nigh. This time, we've got help. So when they want you to fight in their wars, what they don't tell you on that spiritual game plan is they've already been warring against you using spiritual wickedness from high places. Yes, yes, yes. We aren't wrestling against flesh and blood when our children, when this atmosphere is corrupt and polluted with the behaviors of what Yahuwah tells us not to do, be it through that television where we see a long, far vision of sex, murder, mayhem, making it as though it's normal, okay? Mm -hmm. We wrestling against principalities, this, this spiritual wickedness, mm-hmm against powers, yes, 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 against the rulers of darkness of this world, of this world. But we are honoring and glorifying the most high because we know that we have a true savior. We are not going to pretend that we are without sin because we all have come short. We know, but what he told us, we are trusting in his word and he is coming back. He did not break his covenant. Everything he said he would do, he's doing. So beloved, this day, we are going to honor and praise the most high and do not fear and not fear, beloved, but glorify his name.
Beloved. Shabbat Shalom. A word.